Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Star Trek Judgment Rights. And when last we left off, we chased the Vorian into this rift in space-time, into basically an entirely different universe. Here, we have found the Vorian, although the Vorian seems to be in some trouble. We also found various stones that, when Kirk picked them up, elicited very powerful uh, emotions. Emotions that uh, he wasn't feeling naturally. And there's a massive pile of blue stones here that we're not picking up without a pouch because one of them elicited very powerful emotions. Imagine what a pile of them would do, as uh, Kirk has said to Walker. Could very well just kill him. Let's have a look at the uh, Vurian, shall we? She doesn't seem to be doing that well. Let's scan. It's a female of its race, Captain. I'm afraid my tricorder doesn't have much information on Vurians. Fair enough. What about the medical state? Is the Vurian okay? No effect, Captain. I don't have enough knowledge of Vurian anatomy. Well, let's talk to the Vurian. Greetings, Lord Kirk. I am Emilata. I regret the discomfort that I put you through on your ship. I wish only to preserve my joy by serving the Savant. The Savant? Are you willing to help me, Emanata? The Savant? Where is Spock? Good question. How did you come to be here? Good question. What were you doing on my ship? <laughs> Good question. Are you willing to help me, Emanata? Let's find out what were you doing on the ship. Where is Spock? How did you come to be here? What were you doing on my ship? Actually, no, the previous question's better. How did you come to be here? Good question. I was a lone soldier, fleeing the massacres that followed the Three Systems War. I was heavily outnumbered. In desperation, I attempted to use my son's gravity well to propel my ship into a high warp velocity so I could escape the pursuit. It worked. I remember reading about that war in my history class at the Academy. I was warped into the Antares sector. I traveled through a dimensional rift into this place. The Savant sustained me and gave me joy where there was once only despair. I have been here ever since. That was a long time ago. The Savant is now summoned, Lord Kirk. He awaits. Not many footsteps from here. By the Fountainhead. Seek him. Hmm. Are you willing to help me, Emanata? Probably not. Where is Spock? Good question. The Lord Spock is not far. His mind dances in the bliss of this place. He would welcome you. It is not a long or difficult search to find him. Interesting how they refer to Kirk, that the Vurian refers to uh, Kirk and uh, Spock as Lord Kirk and Lord Spock. The Savant awaits. I am unimportant compared to him. Go to him at once. I will. You are the last of your race. That makes you very important. It does. Can you talk about the Savant? Give us a chance to know what to expect. I think that the second option is quite interesting. You are the last of your race. That makes you very important. Mm -hmm. Physical forms are unimportant. A species is only a similarity of material form, constructed from genetic instructions. Only emotions matter. I get the feeling you might not be completely believing that. You might be being influenced by this savant. Are you willing to help me, Emanata? What were you doing on my ship? Good question. The savant empowered me to remove any psionically adept being from your ship, and to prevent you from following him. It was not our intention to do you harm. Is that why you took away Spock? The Savant awaits. I am unimportant compared to him. Go to him at once. I will. You are the last- Can you talk about the Savant? Give us a chance to know what to expect. Good question. Nothing I can say will truly prepare you for what awaits. Are you willing to help me, Emanata? Probably not. Possibly. I am aware of your ship's distress. I can bring it to the attention of the Savant. It may help. That would be helpful. Actually, I was thinking more about freeing Spock. No, that's helpful. What is the Savant? I would appreciate the Savant being informed. Yeah, I would appreciate that, definitely. It is done. The Savant awaits. Thank you. I think we shall go and see the Savant now. I don't know what to expect. Save but it's probably going to be something otherworldly, as this place is generally otherworldly. I am the 
survived. I wish you and all entities nothing but joy. There is also a crashed ship here. Who are you? That is a good question. Why do you ensnare others against their will? Let's not antagonize the savant. Release Spark at once and allow us to return to our ship. Let's be friendly. Who are you? Once, eons ago, I was akin to you. A creature of flesh and pain. But I released myself from these bonds and became an entity of pure emotion. And I came to this place to find a shelter from the cares of the universe. Okay. That is the savant. The savant. Hmm. Strange boulders jut from the depths of this strange planetscape. They do. The remains of a Vurian life support capsule. Ah, this is the Vurian ship. The remains of a Vurian life support capsule. The remains of a... Okay, and here is... A pouch from the Vurian life support capsule. Oh, we're gonna get that. We need that. We definitely need that. We also need to look at the crew and talk to the crew. James Kirk, captain of the Enterprise. That he is. Hikaru Sulu, the trusty helmsman of the Enterprise. That he is. Pavel Chekhov, the faithful navigator of the Enterprise. Indeed. Angus Walker, sturdy security officer of the Enterprise. All very true. Suggestions on how to get Spock and get out of here. I think the savant can hear you. Not a clue. Sorry, Captain. Ditto. Oh, that was helpful. We need to find a weakness in whatever kidnapped Spock. We do. I'm afraid I'm all out of ideas. Maybe if we analyze everything, we might think of something. We might. Why do I have the feeling that a phaser isn't going to solve our problems this time? Definitely not. In fact, we've got no real reason to talk to uh, this entity at all at the moment. Let's go find Spock. There are a lot of faces there. They all seem to be of certain emotions, too. Spock, what have they done to you? Let's find out. Fascinating. Emotional intensity of a previously unknown level. Our link with the Savant acts as an amplifier. The more minds in union with him, the greater the level of emotion. And happiness is a powerful emotion. It is. Spock, do you want this? Knowing Spock? No. Happiness is a human desire, Captain. I am a Vulcan. I want to be free of emotions. This is the antithesis of my desires. It is. Spock. Yep, this situation is not good. The wreckage of an alien derelict, the Vorian's life support pod. There are a hundred archaeologists who would love to be standing with you right now. Oh yes, they would. Although it looks like common dirt. We've seen that one before. These large bright rocks seem to have been thrown to the surface of this planetscape from below. Their color makes an interesting contrast with the dull color of the surrounding land. Indeed. Mr. Spock, the best science officer in Starfleet. You sure about that? Lieutenant Walker who doesn't really know any of these bridge people very well. Maybe you will after this. Lieutenant Sulu, who has always had a great deal of respect for Spock's scientific talents. Yep. Ensign Chekhov, who never expected to be traveling to another universe. You're a member of the crew of the Enterprise. It's pretty much standard. James T. Kirk, in anguish due to his friend's predicament. We'll be able to sort it, don't worry. We must find a way to free Spock. Indeed. Captain, wouldn't stunning Mr. Spock break whatever control that he's under? It would. Unless we deal with the creature that's doing this, it would only provide temporary relief. Indeed. Why is this being done to Spock, Captain? What benefit does someone get from subjecting him to an emotion? Mm, you pretty much described it. We've seen energy forms that feed on hatred. Why shouldn't there be some creatures that feed on happiness? An addict who must have happiness and who relies on others to fulfill an increasing need for more happiness. Possible? Captain. Vulcans don't like emotions, do they, Captain? That missed all that dialogue. There have been incidents where 
Vulcans who were deliberately exposed to emotions went insane. Fortunately, I do not appear to be in immediate danger. Although you may be. Well, we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to sort this. Let's talk to you. I shall try to tell you what I know. The emotions make it difficult to communicate. The creature that has done this is called the Savant. A being of great power that has transformed itself into a creature of living emotion. It can form a link with any creature with psionic abilities, including Vulcans. It, it taps into latent emotions and amplifies them, using them to increase its emotional st stability. That's not good. What happens if it gets cut off from you on the Vurian? We don't know. It would be alone, but could cope. We enhance its enjoyment, but we are not essential to its survival. We're like a, a backup system. It relies on us for emotional support, but it, it could exist without us. So we could save Spock. Hmm. Well, let's do that idea that we had, which was, uh, knocking him out. I understand, Mr. Chekhov. It is quite logical. It is. Excellent. He is unconscious. Mr. Spock, the Let's not talk to the Savant just yet. Yeah, let's just ignore the Savant, because I don't want to talk to the Savant right now, you know, when we have sort of knocked out Spark. That's kind of bad. We do, however, want to grab these stones using this bag. I'll get them, Captain. Indeed. And with the bag, we should be able to get them. Thank you, Mr. Walker. I've put them in the pouch we found. Boy, am I getting an odd feeling from these stones. Oh? Probably not a good one, either. If there are a lot of those stones, you really don't want to have this emotion, maybe? I don't know. I mean, they are pretty much emotion crystallized, in a way. So we're going to have to find a way to, uh, negotiate with the Savant. Captain, you misunderstand me. It is not my will to bring harm to any creature. I have taken two creatures that are without the most important thing in existence, joy, and given it to them in infinite variety and abundance. The Vurian was filled with despair at the death of her race. She was overwhelmed by sorrow and grief. I have healed her of these afflictions forever. As for the Vulcan, he has been conditioned to deny his emotions. I am bringing him in contact with a part of himself that will enhance his life. Mm, it is a gift of love. I don't think Spark wants that, though. You have no right to inflict emotions on any being, regardless of how positive you may think them to be, without their consent. That's true. Get a life. You can't just sit around feeling happy for eternity. What does that accomplish? Love? Spock doesn't want your gift. He doesn't need your gift. Release him and let us return to our ship. Mm. You have no right to inflict emotions on any being, regardless of how positive you may think them to be, without their consent. Let's try that one. I give them an eternity of joy. Is that not every creature's desire? How can granting a subliminal desire be beyond my rights? Because you're giving them no choice? That is the most arrogant piece of presumption I have ever heard. Let's not anger the savant. An eternity of joy. And I suppose you derive no benefits from the people you hold prisoner? 
Do you honestly believe that because what you do may benefit them, that the ends justify the means? That's a good response. That is the mo an Let's that is, try that do you one. you honestly believe that because what you do may benefit them, that the ends justify the means? Good question. Yes, Captain. For such a great good as that which I provide, the ends do justify the means. Oh dear. Not going to be able to uh, persuade the Savant otherwise. I will send you back to your own ship and give you safe passage through the Antares Rift if you wish. Hmm. But we won't have Spock. We won't have Spock. Save need replace we me. need Spock. And we know that these stones provide emotions. Let's see what happens if we give back some of these emotions. And I say for a particular reason. Have some emotion back, Savant! You disturb my rest. Fortunately, I am not alone in bliss. Do not use such a tactic again on me. I warn you. Oh? What is this? What am I feeling? What have you done? I have given you an emotion you did not want. What's the matter, Savant? Not feeling those good vibrations? Gotta be very careful here. Life isn't all happiness and joy. It's time you experienced a reality check. Is that sadness you're feeling, Savant? It couldn't be that those inferior humans have outwitted your great wisdom, could it? We basically got to be very tactful here. What's the matter, Savant? Not feeling those but let's be not very tactful, just to see what happens. Please, have mercy. I would rather die than experience such sorrow. If you will listen to reason, I will release you. Free Spock and return us to- You really are a crybaby. Go ahead and ball your head off. What if we do this? What if we poke the savant too much? If I cannot cherish the happiness that I have spent eons pursuing, then I shall belong to oblivion. Yeah. Captain, without the savant, the fabric of this universe will... Yeah. Load of previously saved the fabric of this universe will cease to exist and all life in it will die. Do not be untactful to the savant. And we have returned from a cut in the video. You may be wondering, why has there been a cut in the video at this point? And that is because I've discovered something quite unusual that takes place at this point in the game, specifically. You know this sort of background sound effect of wind and thunder and basically this foreboding weather effects that are making an atmosphere of tension? Yeah, that sound effect doesn't go away once you leave this area. When you're back on the bridge of the Enterprise, and even into the start of the next mission, this wind sound effect persists. I've played a little bit ahead, and it does go away when you beam down to the location of the sixth mission, but the fact that it just carries on is a little troublesome. Now, you may think, well, just turn it off. And I will go into the uh, sound effects, and I'll turn off the uh, sound effects. Sound effects have been turned off. It's still here. So, we're now going to go into turn off the music. It's not part of the music channel. As far as I can gather, this is actually part of its own unique third, like, sound selection, this ambience track, that you cannot turn off. And I've actually checked with previous saves that I've done. I've checked with a um, save on the second mission, and a save with the third mission, and when I've turned off the music, there is still all of the ambient noise in the background, a sound channel that I cannot even touch or interact with. The only way to actually avoid it would be to play the game completely in mute. And so I can only apologize about the fact that up until we get to the point where the uh, ambience is overwritten by another one, that we're going to have constant storm and lightning sound effects. But we're going to have to soldier on regardless, because if we don't, we'll never get to that point. Now, in a point where the uh, lightning and storm sound effects are actually apt, we're going to do what we were doing again with the Savant, but first checking to see if I've actually got the, uh, yep, 
So I've got it so that I can uh, control the speed at which the text goes. We're going to throw these stones into here again, and this time, we're going to be far more reasonable in explaining what we are doing and why. You disturb my rest. Fortunately, I am not alone in bliss. Do not use such a tactic again on me. I warn you. Oh, you have warned us, but... What is this? What am I feeling? What have you done? I've thrown in those stones. What's the matter, Sabah? Not feeling those good vibrations? Not a good thing to say. Life isn't all happiness and joy. It's time you experienced a reality change. That's probably more apt. No. I have spent millions of years trying to escape the anguish. Misery is the destroyer of worthy souls, Captain. And you are destroying me. I don't think I am. I'm not destroying you. Your own unwillingness to respect others is destroying you. That's an option. Free Spock and return us to our ship and this will end. That's another option. I didn't want to do this, but if I have to destroy you to free my friend, I will. Um, not a good option. I'm not destroying you. Your own unwillingness to respect others is destroying you. That's the option we're going to pick. Am I really such a monster that I deserve such pain? Well... You have lost respect for others, Sabah. Everyone may have different goals, different ideals than you, and you have the right to pursue them. You need to respect their free will, even if it makes them miserable. Are you going to let Spock go? You do not understand me, Captain, but I am in no mood to argue. You and your scientist may be freed. Enjoy your universe, Captain Kirk. We will! Let's go! Captain's log, we are out of the Antares Rift and are on our way to Starbase 8, where the Enterprise has extensive repairs scheduled. All crew members, including First Officer Spock, are safely aboard. Now, at this point, I believe you could actually leave without Spock. I've never tried it. I don't think you'd ever want to. And as you can hear, those sound effects are persisting even now. And I can only apologize for that. Let's get through this so that we can get to a point where those sound effects don't persist. So, Spock. You mean you had an eternity of pure enjoyment and you gave it up? Also, why are you playing that sound effect through the bridge? I know you said it gave you comfort, but come on, Spock! You've been playing it for three hours straight! Affirmative, Doctor. That has to be the most illogical thing I've ever heard. Humans spend their entire lifetime dreaming of an eternity of pleasure. As do animals in the field. Perhaps humans are meant to be better than that. Perhaps we should dream of greatness and not simple gratification. Greatness is a term subject to individual interpretation, Captain. The savant viewed the pursuit of greatness as useless because all great deeds and accomplishments are destined to be forgotten in cosmic terms. That's a point. A cosmic being thinks in cosmic terms, Spock. But somehow, that philosophy overlooks a lot of life's little pleasures. There's just one thing that bothers me about the whole thing. And it's not the fact that you're playing this storm sound effect in the bridge! Really, Doctor? Spock finally got to enjoy himself, and I wasn't there to see it. Now that's something worth remembering. Oh, McCoy! Message from Starfleet Command. Indeed. On screen. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. You do! One of them is, what's that storm sound effect doing in the background? Well, I'm afraid you're gonna have to talk to Spock about that one. The top brass at Starfleet are impressed with the results of your recent performance. Outstanding work, Jim. Keep up the good work. Kane out. Thank you! And with that, folks, when we come back, we shall enter the sixth mission of this game. And unfortunately, we'll have this persistent lightning sound effect for a little while longer in there. But once we actually get to the location of the second mission, of the second, no, we're going back in time now, second mission, no, sixth mission, then the sound effect will hopefully go. And we'll never have this problem again. We hope. Either that or the Enterprise is just constantly navigating through this massive nebula storm. That would not be good for the Enterprise. Not at all. So, I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later.